Okay, and we're back with our next mission, Hijacked. Fantastic. Oh, another message from Starfleet, and we all know that those messages never mean good news. Let's see what they gotta say. Oh, on screen, Lieutenant. Do 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 do. Okay. So just to give a re quick recap, in case anybody didn't get a chance to read that, um, a Federation vessel has uh, I don't uh, has not reported in, and we're going to go investigate. So now we are on our way. It's, I believe that this is the right one right here. There we go. Ah, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, oh no. See, what did I tell you? Messages from Starfleet always call, lead to trouble. Always. Alright, see what, let's see what these... On screen, Lieutenant. <laughs> Look at this guy. I mean, I mean, seriously, think about it. This guy... We're in the future. We're like in the 23rd century, and this guy is dressed up like a World War One fighter, f fighter plane uh, pl pilot. Look at this. He's got his leather jacket and his got. What do you need goggles for in space? I uh, and he's got his little pirate patch and everything. All right, all right, all right. Now, to, now it's time to do my uh, my pirate voice. Arr. Leave the Beta Maya mid-system immediately! You are interfering in Alassi affairs! We are conducting a search and rescue mission for the USS Masada. The it was last reported in this system. We cannot leave until we can confirm its location and condition. Arr, so be it. You have been warned, prepare to die. All right. Now, one problem I've always had with this particular system has always been the uh, it's always been the space battles. Man, these things are long and tedious and completely unnecessary. And uh, I hear they improve upon it. And I hear they improve upon it in the actual in the sequel to this game. Um, I hear they improve upon a lot of things in the sequel to this game, but but. It's just so static and hard to manage. I mean, I mean, it's, I mean, trying to hit with your phasers is hard enough. Not, n not even mentioning the photon torpedoes, which move like molasses. So unless you're going for like a straight-on shot, there is no way you're going to be hitting with. There's no way you're going to be hitting with photon torpedoes. And it's just always so long and drawn out because that's basically what it is, is getting getting the enemy ship in your ret reticle like this. And just blasting away at it till one of till one gives up. And and look how look how far away it is. I can't even make that shot. I can't even take pot shots at it from a distance, which annoys the living crap out of me. There we go. All right, we're, get, we're making a little bit of progress here. Not not too much, of course, but oh, here we go. It's about to. Aha. Uh -huh, okay. Finally. All right. So we finally got them defeated. Now let's go find this uh, missing ship and see what's going on. All right. Orbit. Ah, oh, there's the Masada just waiting for us. Nice of them to just park there, right? Look at the drastically different design of the ship, too, from the Enterprise. I mean, it's got the same basic structure, but it's got this little deflector dish doodad right here. It's ridiculous. There she is, Captain. She does not appear to be seriously damaged. Her shields are up, and 27 life forms are aboard. 
All right, well, um, I guess we should pale. There we go. Arr, greetings, Federation Imperialists. I am a lassie, Sirith, and I have claimed the ship as a blow for Federation, uh, for freedom against Federation tyranny. Arr. It's funny, he looks exactly like the last guy. Not a lot of character models, apparently. All right, so again, we have Kirk's choices here. What do we got? Uh, let's see. Uh, okay, we only. Oh wait. Uh, you have the, you have the the straight up by the book James T. Kirk. Um, you have the dick, uh, strong arm James T. Kirk option, and then you have the smarmy James T. Kirk option. Let's go with the smarmy James T. Kirk option. I like that. This. Uh, this is Captain James T. Kirk of the USS Enterprise. Uh, Mr. Alassi, it appears that you have found something that Starfleet lost. Good, Captain. You have a sense of humor. That will make this much easier. The Masada is mine. You will release 25 political prisoners, blah, blah. Hmm. Oh, oh. Data file captured, Sir Captain. Computer indicates they are all convicted of piracy within various counts of murder and mayhem thrown in. Uh, let's see. Now, I remember that the score for this mission is partially dependent upon making sure the prisoners are, are kept, uh, are kept alive, so that's, that's critical right here. Ah, okay, let's go with this one. <laughs> of course, you know, the uh, the enemies aren't entirely dumb enough to lower their shields so we can just beam over and, and, and wreck their shit, so, uh... Uh, the Enterprise... Oh, sorry. The Enterprise can overpower the Masada and take her, but the pirates would have all the time they need to kill every one of the hostages. Oh, my... Will you send over data on the whereabouts and conditions of my falsely accused clansmen languishing in your dungeons, Captain? Alright, so I believe we need to, uh, we need to stall him to figure out a plan, so, uh, let's see, uh, this one, uh, this one right here, yes, this one is the, uh, I'm going to stall you to figure out a plan option, so here we go. Alright, so... This particular, the puzzle we're facing right now is that we need to get aboard the Masada so we can subdue these pirates, but their shields are up, so we can't transport on. Now, any fans of, uh, any hardcore fans of Star Trek know that all, uh, Federation starships have what is called a Prefect Code, uh, which allows other ships to override the, uh, uh, other Federation ships' uh, defenses and whatnot in case of situations just like this. It's kind of a failsafe. Now, only hardcore fans really know about this sort of thing, but I, I distinctly remember it from uh, my days of playing this. So what you have to do is you have to talk to Spock first, who will give you the suggestion, so we'll talk. Captain, we could use the command prefix code to lower the Masada's shields briefly, long enough for one transporter burst. I'm sorry, it's a prefix code, not a prefect code. So now that we've talked to Spock, we need to figure out what the prefix code is. And for that, we need to first uh, we're gonna first we're gonna lower our shields. There we go. And then we're gonna talk to uh, Mr. Computer and just uh, look up the Masada. D A. Enter. And there's the prefix code right there. Two. Two nine three three nine one one nine seven seven three six. Hold on a second, folks. I think I'm gonna need to write this down. That is a very long number. Ah, here we go. Okay. So let's just write that down. Two nine three three three. My pencil actually worked. This would go a lot faster. Three three nine one. One nine seven seven three six three eight two nine. Very good. Okay. So now that we have the override code, we can uh 
we can now send that over. We can just go, we can get rid of computer. And now we need to go back to Uhura. And the funny thing is, is that if you didn't talk to Spock and get the prefix code initially, and you used Uhura, um, the only option you would have had was to hail the Masada. And if you hailed the Masada again without having the data packet they wanted, uh, they would kill a hostage, which would get you a lower score. So if you tried hailing them again before doing this prefix code thing, uh, you, would ha you would basically just be dooming yourself to a lower score because they would kill some people. So, uh, but as you can see now, we have a new option, send prefix code. So, enter, and let's input this code. 293391 uh 1977363829 all right that should do it let's see if that works enter oh uh, apparently i need the dashes in there too no uh, I can't just put the number in. All right, let's try it one more time. All right. One more time for you uh, patient viewers out there. Two, nine, three, three, nine, one, dash. One, nine, seven, seven, three, six, dash. Three, eight, two, nine. All right, now that should do it. Enter. Aha, fantastic. All right, we got their shields lowered. Let's let's bum rush them. Let's go. <clears throat> Spock, uh, come with me. Mr. Scott, you have the con. Oh, oh no. No, no. Ow. Ow. Oh wow. This place got trashed. Alright, so, uh, this place got trashed, so, uh, let's take a look around. Um, well, obviously we have this guy down here, so let's make sure he's alright. Bones, do your thing. What do you got for us, Bones? Anything? Anything useful? He's not hurt badly. I can revive him. Well, then, to take, take some initiative, Bones, do it. Alright, there we go. Seriously, these guys can't do anything without you explicitly telling them to do it. It's kind of ridiculous. Ah, Crewman Simpson. <laughs> Crewman Simpson. I can't do a Simpsons voice, unfortunately, so... Uh, thank you, Doctor. Uh, be careful, Captain. The Alassie like to set booby traps. If you need any equipment, I've got my tools in this workspace. Well, that's... that's Well, that's really handy of you. Thank you, Mr. Simpson. Yes. So we'll just go ahead and take whatever that is. All right, let's see what we got. What what, what is it, folks? Uh, there we go. Uh, the Russinate Transmogrifier. This device was invented by an engineer with a sense of humor. <laughs> it's a great name. Russinate Transmogrifier. Only in the Star Trek universe would you have ridiculous names like that, folks. All right, now let's take a look around uh, this space right here, see what we have. All right, let's see. Uh, Spock, tell us what's going on. Uh, I am registering energy residue from phaser fire and phaser grenade detonations. There are readings of another energy weapon, but the type is unknown. Oh, fantastic. Uh, anything highlighted? No, 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 no. Just, just, just the console. All right, what do you got? Even our most efficient en uh, chief engineer, Scott, would have trouble repairing the damage in less than two days. <clears throat> All right. Well, you see the trick. You see, this is one of those tricky situations because, um, because you know, your first instinct is to obviously have him scan it, and he says it can't be fixed in two days. So obviously, you think, okay, well, that's pretty much a dead end. But it's not, as I remember. If you actually choose Spock and then have him and then use Spock on the console, you, up. Oh, you see, he's actually going to do something. <clears throat> He's actually going to... And he's scanning it again for some reason. Uh, controls have been virtually destroyed, Captain. Can they be repaired, Spock? 
With Chief Engineer Scott's assistance, I believe we can get them in perfect working order in two days. Spock, Spock, we don't have two days. If we can repair the transporter, we might be able to transport onto the bridge and capture the Elassi. And uh, this opens up the option of uh, Spock jury-rigging the transporter consoles. So that's one of the uh, that, that, that's one of those instances where where you might not even think to do that because because you know your like I said your first instinct would be to use the science tricorder and his initial scan of it said, oh hey it it would take doctor it would take uh, chief engineer Scott and two full days working on this to get it working again but then if you use Spock on it you you get a completely different thing it, it's it's a little backwards and a li and you know a little difficult to uh, to work out what you're supposed to do sometimes when you have situations like that but. Uh, the transporter is only one of two options, as I recall. So let's uh, let's take a look around here and uh, see uh, see what other things we have. Twisted debris has been scattered along the side of the corridor. Hmm. Uh, that thing. This view screen communication terminal has been damaged beyond repair. All right, and that some kind of force field appears to cover the. Uh, well, I don't see a force field, but Spock, tell me more. Ah, there we go. A force field of unusual configurations has been erected in front of the doorway which leads into the bridge. I don't think it would be healthy to approach too closely, Captain. Interesting. Alright, so there is a there is a force field blocking entry into the bridge and there's the possibly jury-riggable transporter so right now the scenario is offering two two ways to uh, to get onto the bridge we just need to figure out how so uh, there's some doodads over can I can I take some of this stuff no how about try and try don't you just love adventure games where you just click around randomly to try and find stuff Wow Wow Kirk just Kirk just took an armful of garbage let's see what we got Eyeball. There we go. Let's see. We got some scraps of metal found in the corridor. Fantastic. Uh, we have some scraps of wire. All very useful, apparently. Uh, a phaser welder, and it is without power. Interesting. And these weapons have been power. Uh, these weapons are powerless, having been shorn of their power packs. So we have a couple of weapons: a phaser welder, some wires, some bits of metal. And a resundant uh, and a rus russinate transmogrifier at our disposal. So, uh, I believe. Oh, let's see. Okay. You see, it's a good thing to always scan everything before you proceed because in situations like this, there are two armed uh, individuals on the other side of this door, and I'd actually not remembered that. And I could have been that could have ended very badly. I might have lost one of my uh one of my away one of my away crew if I had gone in there. So uh now that I'm aware of what's happening. Oh snap. Alright, alright, quickly, 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 quickly. Oh man. You gotta love how fast Kirk is on the draw, man. He's he's like a freaking cowboy, just blap blap. I mean that that one already had his gun out, and Kirk just wow, that, Kirk just blasted him. All right, let's take a look around, see what we got here. Uh, the brig. Okay, we're in the brig. Uh, nine of the crew members are held in the cell. Two elastic guards lie on the floor. Well, y yes, I know that. I just blasted them, but I'm a little concerned about this little thingy right here. Uh, a bomb. Oh, a bomb. Oh. That doesn't look at all nice. Let's see. Spock, what can you tell me about this bomb? Oh, it's a phaser bomb. That's even worse. Um, phaser bombs, as I recall, uh, detonate. When they detonate, they send out a big old blast of uh, phaser energy that disintegrates pretty much anything anything in their radius. And uh, that, that will pretty much kill everybody inside if we detonate it. So let's see what we got. Uh, scan that. And we can't open the brig or the bomb goes off. Fantastic. Now, this is another one of those situations, because uh, you may not, you may think you need some sort of a, 
some sort of tool to uh, to fix this. No, again, you just need Spock and uh, click Spock on these uh, the set of wires. Do not have click Spock on the control panel or the bomb or the force field. Click Spock uh, or click Spock on these wires right here. I don't know if you can use any of the other ones. I'm not really willing to try. But uh, click Spock on these wires here, and he'll just go over and snip. There, the bomb is deactivated. So, that being done, we can now safely open the brig and release these poor crew members who are just, just waiting in there. <clears throat> Ensign Ricky. Oh, it's just, you, this poor guy doesn't even, you see, that that's hilarious because the guy over in the transporter room actually gets a name. His name was Simpson. This guy doesn't even get a name. He's just Masada Crewman. Uh, thank you for freeing us, Captain. We'll, uh, thank you for freeing us. Captain, will secure the area so they don't come up behind you. Electrical problems with the door outside the bridge. Uh, uh, oh, ha, ha. Ah, you see, and there's the, uh, there's the nifty little, uh, indication that there that you can actually get to the bridge through the force field door he, he's a, um, the crewman's telling you that there is an electric shutdown device hidden near the door to the bridge that you can uh, take advantage of um, a charged phaser welder two feet to the left of the door and one foot off the ground you might be able to shut down the force field and get a jump on the elassi which is pretty fantastic that being said um, let's go pilfer some things. That bomb might be useful. So those wires, fantastic. Let's, uh, let's have, uh, Bones do his thing, make sure everyone's alright. No? Oh, no, no, everyone's fine? Really? Really? Everyone's good? Oh, oh. The crew is tired and have elevated signs from extreme stress, but they will survive. All right, as long as you say they're all right, Bones, I'm cool with it. All right, so let's take a look at what we have now. We have a bomb with three wires, primitive but potentially quite deadly. And we now have a length of wire removed from the terrorist bomb. That being said, we are now posed with two different options. We can either storm the bridge through the door using the uh, phaser welder method that Mr. Uh, Masada crewman here described to us, or we could have Spock try and jury rig the transporter. Well, you know, let's let's try and uh, work out both. See which one I can I can puzzle together because, if I recall correctly, this is some uh, crazy item combination nonsense that's uh, difficult to do. So, bam! I remember that much that the phaser welder is now charged, and I think that's really all I needed for the door problem is the phaser welder to uh, get the door open I just have to use it in the right spot so before we attempt that let's uh, let's try and get uh, Spock to jury rig the uh, this thing I know you're supposed to use, uh, you're supposed to figure out some way to get a bit for, let's, let's try and charge these weapons. Nope, nope, okay. Uh, let's try that with these. Oh. Aha, see, see? You needed the phaser welder for both paths. You needed the phaser welder to, uh, to actually deactivate the, the force field, and you needed the phaser welder to create a bit out of the metal that you picked up for the uh, Russinate Transmogrifier. God, I love that name. So now that we have our nifty little uh, bit, let's use that on uh, Bada Bing. Now that we have that, let's see if we can get Spock to use it on the thing. All right, he needs a spare length of wire which I think we have sufficient amount of. Let's try that. Uh, yes, good. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> Spock, you're a genius. I wouldn't go that far, Jim, but I do have to congratulate you, Mr. Spock. 
now we can really risk uh, risk shooting over at, uh, our, our atoms around the universe. Is this really necessary, Jim? <laughs> uh. Analysis, Lieutenant Christensen, Ensign Ricky. Uh, security analysis, sir. If we transport onto the bridge, we'll have the drop on them, assuming Mr. Spock has the transporter working properly. If we could get past the force field on the uh, door of the bridge, we could we should be able to surprise them for sure. Since we have a bomb, Captain, we could rearm it, transport it into the onto the bridge, and perhaps the Alassie will flee into the hallway. Then we could capture them. And any hostages on the bridge will be killed when the bomb goes off. No, Jim, that's inhuman. <laughs> to say nothing of the possible damage to the bridge controls. All right. So, Ensign Ricky was kind enough to summarize our three options. We can go through the force field door, we can use the transporter, or we can just send the bomb onto the bridge and either kill everyone or force the uh, pirates out onto the uh, out into the hallway and just uh, capture them there. Now obviously we're not going to do the bomb method because uh, that's horrible. So uh, let's see what to do, what to do. Let's see if we can activate de deactivate the force field. I haven't done that in many 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 years I don't think I was able to figure it out when I was uh when I was a kid so let's see if the, if I could figure it out now all right he said like two feet and one feet so it should be like right there or something nope nope that didn't do it it's it's somewhere it's somewhere over here no nope, no nope, it's I don't know if it needs like pixel perfect accuracy or something. It's got to be around here somewhere. Nope. Right here. Nope. Oh, oh, there we go. We got it. Well, you know what? The door has been unsealed. Let's uh let's go. And I do recall the best option is to talk to him. That's right. You get onto the bridge. You get onto the bridge finally to face down the pirates, and you're not even gonna blast them. We're just gonna tell them to surrender. I don't know. It might end in a firefight. Let's find out. Are you are an honorable and worthy opponent, Kirk. I accept your offer. Boo! Don't get to blast some pirates. How upsetting. All right. So uh. That was, there we go. We did it. We uh we saved the Masada, ladies and gentlemen. Good job. All right. So uh now the uh there they go. <laughs> oh my god. Clones of Ensign Ricky everywhere. <laughs> I mean seriously, they look exactly the same. I think for such an old game, uh they didn't have a lot of character models to work with. I think they also improved upon that in the sequel as well. Um but I haven't actually played the sequel to verify that. And that'll probably be a future Let's Play for you uh, loyal viewers out there. Something to look forward to. Hi, <laughs> uh, Captain. Oh, ow. Owie. Owie. Loud noise. Very unpleasant. You might as well get used to that noise a lot, folks, because we're going to be transporting all over the place in the future. Oh. Oh, what do they got for me this time? All right, a 91. Good job, guys. We're not doing so bad this time around. All right. Uh, trying to hold a Federation starship captive. Can you believe it? Since we just witnessed that very event, Doctor, I'm surprised you ask. It was a rhetorical question, Spock. <laughs> oh, those crazy Spock and Bones. All right. Um... That took quite a bit of organization to seize a starship. Think we'll see more of the Alassie pirates? Undoubtedly, Captain. I suspect they have considerably more resources to draw on. Huh. So do I. <laughs> I love the Kirk voice. All right. Uh, all right. That's it for this uh, this episode. I will see everyone next time in the next insta in the next mission for our intrepid crew see you later boom